We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Aperture's MC12 Lite production kit. Now, typically, I write out my episodes. In fact, <laughs> I, I actually don't even have a teleprompter for this show. I actually write out all of my episodes, and then I throw it on my phone. And already, by looking at the script, I realize how long this episode is going to be. So... Uh, with that being said, uh, there will be chapter points below, so if you're looking for a certain spot of something that you want to figure out with the MC, uh, chapter points are going to be in the description below. But without further ado, digging into the 12 light production kit, we have a nice hard shell case, which we can see on one side has a male IEC plug, and next to that we have a DTAP plug, and this is where we can plug power into the kit for charging. And on the other side, we have two latches that when unlocked, we can pull out an accessory drawer for the IEC cable itself, along with a DTAP cable and two USB-C cables. We also get four hot shoe ball mounts, four 3 8 16 to quarter 20 adapter screws, eight 3M Velcro sticky pads, and then finally four silicone rubber diffusers. <laughs> rubber. Now the side with the handle that has two latches when opened up will give us access to our 12 MC lights. Now this next part you don't really have to do as the MC lights come halfway charged already, but something that I like to do with everything that has an internal battery, whether it's these lights or other lights that I've bought that, are, that have a battery inside them or my phone, is uh, I'll plug all of them in and give them a full charge first before I use any of it. Now while doing this, you can satisfyingly peel off the protective films of the front of all 12 lights. I could do this all day, it's so satisfying. Somebody make that a job. I would, ch I would change my career to, to just be that. What, what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm a film protection peeler. I'm a protection peeler. I'm a PP. So we'll plug in the IEC cable and on the top right of the kit, you will see the red power switch. Flip it on and walk away. Or if you have a dionic battery, you can plug it in, D-tap to D-tap cable, and charge the kit that way. So two things about charging. Uh, a, do not shut the case while you're charging these lights. Um, and B, do not shut this case while the lights are on in the case. The reason being is that the case will start generating heat with all the electrical components inside, so make sure to leave the kit open and let it breathe. That being said, it's also worth pointing out that this case is not waterproof, and because of this reason. The side with the handle and the bottom of the case look like this, not completely for style, but because there are vents to help keep the kit cool while capably charging the kit to full capacity. Now these MCs are sitting on a familiar technology to charging phones wirelessly, which means yes, you can place your phone or multiple devices in place of an MC and it will charge those as well. The MCs will take around three and a half hours to charge wirelessly, but if you think that you'll need them faster than that, you can plug in a USB-C cable into the five volt, two amp USB plugs, and it'll actually only take two hours for them to charge. Now, if you think that you're gonna need to use those faster than that, I can only buy you another half an hour. You can go and get what's known as a PD charger or a power delivery charger, and that will actually charge the MCs in an hour and a half. So. You've got those three options. Um, it's also worth noting that you can charge this unit while it's in use, but only at 40% or lower. Anything over 40% and you're not gonna be charging anything. Okay, so now that I've shown you guys the case, let's actually dive into the MCs themselves. The MCs have a pretty good 50-50 aluminum to plastic ratio all the way around in terms of build quality. Uh, each MC has a quarter 20 female mount option on the bottom, along with super strong magnets on the back. And while you would normally look for metal surfaces to stick to, don't weigh out the option of just walls by themselves. Every house tends to have a strip of metal on edges and corners beneath the drywall. As you can see here on this wall, I can stick multiple MCs to it. Or like I said before, with edges and corners, you can stick to those as well. You might even be lucky enough to find like a stud or like patches inside of drywall because a lot of patches, uh, patchwork, and you know, you know what it looks like. Uh, sometimes people will use these metal plate mesh things uh, behind them, uh, so you could stick to those as well. Chances of finding one are probably slim to none, but it's another option. To turn on the MC, flip the switch on the side of it and the display will kick on. Next to the switch is a click wheel for navigating through the menu of the MC. Here we are in CCT mode, which we can dial anywhere between 3200 and 6500 degrees Kelvin. And pressing the click wheel once will let you control the brightness from one to 100%. And at full power, Aperture has said that this light will give you 1100 lux at 0.3 meters or one foot basically. Now the MC has many different modes aside from CCT and to access another mode, press and hold the click wheel down and then using the wheel we can cycle through the menus such as CCT, HSI, FX, CFX, BT, and VER. First, we will select HSI by clicking the wheel and we can dial in the color based on a 360 degree color wheel. Once we're happy with that, we'll click the wheel once, which will pull up saturation, then clicking one more time, we can set our intensity. Now for all the effects and the effects presets, you will only be able to dial in the intensity, but you do have more options with the Citus Link app, which we'll look into a little bit later. The MC has nine presets, paparazzi, fireworks, faulty bulb, TV, lightning, party, 
pulsing cop car, and last but not least, firepower. We also have CFX, but those are actually custom presets that you yourself are going to make. Uh, we're gonna revisit that a little bit later when we go into the Citus app, uh, but for now, we have BT for Bluetooth, which will let us reset the Bluetooth to control this with the Citus app, and VER for version so that you can stay up to date on firmware. Now, all the way to the right, the display will tell you that the Bluetooth is active, and underneath that is the battery indicator. Now, we're gonna head over into the Citus Link app and talk about the world of possibilities this thing has. First, go through all 12 lights and reset the Bluetooth by hitting Bluetooth and then click wheel yes to reset and then go into the Citus app and make a new scene. The 12 lights should appear and you can tap all in the top right and then on the bottom, click set up. Citus will go through each MC and pair it with the app. To control all of them at the same time, scroll down under groups and select all fixtures. However, if you would like to control one MC independently, you will first need to locate which one you want to control. And the way to figure out which light is the light you want to modify is by tapping the little white dot next to the names of the MC and the light will light up an SOS pattern flash to indicate the light that you are using. And a fun little fact here is that the SOS pattern is actually saying here. Now my first go around with this, I found that Citus didn't find all the lights and so I had to reset the Bluetooth again on the MCs that were not found. And once I did that, Citus was able to locate them and I was back in business. So if you're not getting control of all the MCs, just reset the Bluetooth like I did here. The first menu is CCT menu where you can turn the light on and off, change the intensity using the intensity slider, or by the buttons of quarter, half, or full. And then the color temp, whether you are using the slider or the hotkeys to dial 3200, 4000, or 5600. Tabbing into source type, we have a list of different real world lighting sources. At the bottom it will say day white, tungsten, studio lamps, studio CP light, HMI 5600, HMI 6000, Daylight, short arc lamp, and horizon daylight. Regardless what light source you choose, you can still dial the color plus or minus 300 degrees. In our next tab, there is source match, which will try to match the environment you're in based on color temperature. This is where you can point directly at lights or even outside sources to try and match in color temperature. Here, you can also adjustify the intensity, or if you think the match is not close enough, you can fine tune the CCT to get even closer, as well as add plus or minus green shifts. Next tab is gels, or rather CCT. TO slash B where you can tell the lights what kind of color you'd like to have them start as and replicate a color correction gel through it. HSI will let you dial not just the intensity, but also pick a color visually through hue and saturation. Then there's the picker menu, which will let you pick a color randomly on set to have the lights match to. Uh, in my case, the screen tape on the floor, again, being able to dial intensity, the hue within 10 degrees, and then saturation as well. Next up is the effects menu, which are the preset effects that we listed earlier, but with the Citus Link app, you have much more control over things like frequency or color in either CCT or HSI. Now, I won't relist all the different mods that you can add to effects, but definitely a lot of control there. And like I said, we're gonna come back to this area when we come back to CFX because this kind of plays within that area. Okay, so from here, we're gonna start getting even more advanced. So just just bear with me. The first thing I'm going to suggest is that you tab over into CCT mode and set all your lights to on at some sort of intensity and color and then hit fixtures. Once you've done that, you'll be directed back into your scene menu. On the bottom, there's this sciency looking atom thing, which stands for network. Tap that and you'll be defaulted to a giant blank box with a plus sign, but underneath that on the right are four little squares inside of a circle. Tap that and you will now be given a couple of different grids. Each square represents one light. They have broken it down by four lights, nine lights, 16 lights, and 25. We need control over all 12 lights, so we'll choose the closest to our setup, which is four by four, and we won't use all the spots, but luckily Citus doesn't care. Citus doesn't even care. Next, we need to find where each light is, and we can do that by hitting the little circle next to each light name to get the SOS signal, and in this case, the first light on my list is in the third position on my wall, and these boxes are labeled one through 12, but the numbers won't display until a light is assigned to it. So we will tap the light name and tap the third box to assign it to the light. Move on down the list through the rest of your lights. Again, SOS signal here it's now the 11th light from the bottom so we'll go to assign it and if you hit the wrong box tap the box again to unassign it and then tap the name again to assign it to the correct box that you meant to assign it to and why not one more time just to be redundant hit the SOS button we see it's the first light on the bottom so we'll tap the name and tap the first box once you have assigned all your lights, you'll tap the check mark on the mid right hand side of the screen. Citus will pull up a timeline where you now can make your own lighting sequence. First, you need to tell Citus what you want the light to do. 
On the bottom, there's flash and continue. Flash will make the lights flash and continue will keep them on. Here, I'm just going one through 12, and when you're done, press the green play button to show the sequence. As you can see, the MCs are now flashing in the order that I assigned them to in the timeline. To completely delete your timeline, hit the undo looking arrow button. Citus will ask you if you'd like to reset your timeline, hit reset, and now you're starting from scratch again. Now, I'm gonna show you the continue selection by tapping and highlighting it green, and I'll just hit one through 12 again. As you can see, the lights don't shut off even though the timeline is finished. However, there is an off button next to continue. If we select that, we can dial our lights to turn off at a certain point in the timeline. And if I play that back, you can see that the lights go one through 12 and then shut off in the reverse way that I programmed it. There's also A, B where you can set an in and an out point anywhere in your timeline to tell Citus the only part of the timeline that you'd like to play back. The A will pause letting you know that you're about to select your endpoint, and once you have found your endpoint, tap the AB button where Citus will assign that with a little green A, and when you found your endpoint, hit AB again, and Citus will mark that as your B out point. And now if we hit play, Citus will only play what's between A and B. That's right, Citus is having an AB conversation, so see your way out of it before D and E come to F you up. This isn't in regards to the AB thing that I was just describing, but regardless whether you have the AB point or not, you can loop the pattern continuously over and over again by hitting the loop button directly next to the play button. When you hit play, Citus will play back the same sequence over and over again until you stop it. You can also hit the button again if you want the sequence to only play once, which is why there's a little one that appears if you tap it. Now, if you want all the lights to come on at the exact same time in a sequence, you can do that by pressing all at the top of your screen, and this will act as one giant button. And now we will dive deeper into the rabbit hole with color. The flash and continue buttons can be tapped twice to customize them even further, but here we'll just start with the flash again. Here you have two options for color, either CCT or HSI. In CCT mode, we can dial in a few things, our intensity, our color temp, our plus and minus green, frequency, and how many times we want our flash to flash. Here I've set the flash to 22 times, and by hitting set as default, I've now set my color, and I can select all of them once and play the sequence, and the lights will flash 22 times even though the sequence has stopped playing. And if we go back into the flash color menu, you can also add a hue in HSI mode and you'll get the exact same controls as you did in CCT, just with RGB. Here, I'll just pick a green, make a quick sequence, and play that back so you can see it. Very nice. We'll double tap continue and we have pretty much all the exact same settings except with some additional stuff in CCT mode. You can add a fade in and fade out time along with what type of fade in curve we'd like our lights to have and how long we'd like them to be at their max intensity setting with continuous time controls. Now I haven't showed different lighting curves so in this I just kind of mocked something up real quick so that you could get kind of a side by side split screen difference uh, between linear, exponential, logarithmic, and S curve. And again, tabbing over into HSI, we also have the same set of controls, so not too much to cover there, only with changing the hue of the light and not the color temp. Now, probably one of my favorite parts about this app. The chase tab is pretty cool and also gives us the ability to change the color in CCT or HSI, but with some other options as well. The intensity, for example, has two options, either point or range. I'll be showing this in HSI mode to show it more clearly, but point means that you're going to set one specific parameter for the light to follow, where range will give you two points to choose from. Basically, the light will start on the left parameter and will mix to end on the right parameter. In this mode, you can see that almost all the settings have that point and range shortcut. So, you know, you'll have to kind of experiment and play around with this, but once you get the hang of how these controls work, you can make some really cool rolling color effects like I've made here. <laughs> I did it. Also, if you are looking for any of these effects to happen on two or more lights at the exact same time, you can create an array by tapping the plus sign in the top right corner of the screen. From here, you can tap any number of lights, then hit link, and then press OK, and it will sync those lights that you chose together. Now you can create an effect that has lights dancing together harmoniously. All right, last but not least, setting CFX on MCs through Citus. First, go into your scene menu. Instead of hitting all fixtures under groups, tap one of the lights you'd like to control. From here, tap the effects tab. You have the ability to completely create an effect from scratch, or you can record effects and modify them. For example, here I'm recording the Aperture website and I can record up to two minutes, but once I hit stop, I can name the recording and now I can control the hue and saturation of what I've just recorded. Now on the bottom of the screen above presets is a little MC picture icon. Tap that and you will have a menu that has 10 boxes in addition to being able to control the intensity, speed, chaos, and if you want the effect to play from beginning to end, play in reverse or loop. 
but first we have to upload the effect to the MC. The MC can hold up to 10 custom effects that you've created, but to upload the effect, tap the box that you would like to upload it to. You'll then hit the arrow button pointing up and the story will appear on your screen where your effect is saved. Tap that and then it will ask you if you want the CCT version of the effect or the HSI version of the effect. I'm gonna select HSI and press OK where Citus will then install the effect on your MC so that you can dial it in even if you don't have your phone. Such as I'm doing here, back on the MC, I will go to CFX, tap PP1, and now my effect is running without the help of Citus. I think this is such a cool thing that you can like throw your own custom presets into a bunch of lights and then you don't even need the help of the Citus app to, to actually help you. Uh, so I think it's a really cool effect. While we're doing this with one light, you can't just like batch export to all 12 of them or all 25 of them or however many you have. You can't just do that with one click. But I was talking with Aperture a little bit and it is something that they're trying to figure out. They're trying to figure out a more stable way to do it. But for right now, you can only go and upload it to one light at a time. Perfect. So it's kind of a bummer, but know that they're working on it. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. Aperture, thank you so much for, well, just sending me lights. You guys have literally, like my inventory is is getting huger now, which which is great. But at the same time, I always love to kind of like toy around with the, the new technology that's out there. So I really appreciate what you guys are doing for me and, and what, I, what I can maybe bring to you guys. So um, on top of that though, uh, if you guys are watching this and you have some other ideas for Aperture, they are pretty uh, focused on the comment sections and they always read these things because they wanna make their products better. So if you guys have suggestions for Aperture, put them in the comment section below, man. They're gonna hear you out. Uh, but sadly, like I said, that is all that I have for you guys today. And if you like today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You could also follow me on Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.